What's up? What's up? What's up? Hey, time. I like to thank everybody for watching. What's on your mind? What's on your mind? What's on your mind? I will see my Kamara Saturday from 5 30, 6 30. Kicking it live for you, the people, the community, and keeping it real. Everybody got to see some JoJo. Well, I had a dream that I was back in this room, you know, getting filmed about something. You know, you saw things, it's like things taking its place at a time. He's just an entertaining person. That's just the only one where I feel I got power in my hands by having that microphone in my hands. It's like without that mic out my hands, I feel kind of um, Right now, I feel kind of weak. But once I get a mic, though, I can't let it go. He had a sparkle in his eyes. Sometimes you'll see it with um, people that you just meet in person. You don't see it. But when you put him in front of the camera, something lights up. And sometimes it's just the eyes. And he had it. <laughs> he comes into the show, and he's not like searching for what to talk about. He comes in prepared with an agenda because he's hot on some issue. All right, I know everybody's gonna try to get up and talk about the election. Today's topic today, you know you got your loves going on out there. You know, basically, it's a teenager talk show, and this is basically the show is designed for young kids and teenagers to call up there and voice their opinions about issues that goes on in the world. You know, you got your scene, you got your headline, but ain't it for the kids to hear. When I was eight years old, me and most of my friends. We call ourselves the 12th Street Posse. We ain't nobody like a little, well, we was like a little kitty kid game. And we just sitting there playing around, having fun, until this one guy by the name of David Ferrer, he had a little camera. And we just, you know how kids, you see a TV camera, you just wave your hand, shot again. But he said, well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold him up, hold him up. He said, won't y'all just finish just doing this? I'm just going to tell y'all how, how to do things. And then I just said, I would love to learn how to do this. And he just looked at me and said, you learn how to do this? I said, I'd like, like to learn how to do this. And he said, well, I'll tell you what. He said, you go right there, and I'm going to introduce you to this lady. And so we both walked up here, and we came through the doors, and there was a lady by the name of, of C.E. Her name is Claudia. And um, he said, hey, this guy right here, he just loved, he just loved to be on TV. He just interested into filming and stuff. It was about 12 of us. I had a staff of three people right here, right here, plus I had my three cameramen, so I had my sound man, and I had my floor director. And I was running all this. Fifth grade. I was running a whole production. So then we started our own Kids of Corporation pr production for ACTV, and it became a big hit. So I was a, a public access staff person since 1982. And JoJo walked into my life when we moved here to the east side. We used to be over in central South Austin. And he was a student, elementary student at Blackshear Elementary, which is real close to this site here in East Austin. And JoJo was mostly working at Carver Library, which is a site that I helped um, supervise where we had public access equipment. And um, he was just a friendly face, uh, one of the kids doing programming. So in 1992, I got my first my live series started up, and I've been on ever since then. Two years ago, this woman named Miss Sue Cole, and she was asking me, she's saying, how come you ain't on TV hardly no more? I said, well, everybody left, you know. And she said, well, I can help you out. And so she just, she brought me up a lot. You know, she just made me come back strong. The NWACP holds up this, this, it's like an Olympics for the minorities. The name of that program is called EXO. And what EXO does, they go into every school and they try to get the best talent of, in, you know, media, into sculptures, painting, singing, opera, you know, all kinds of stuff. They go into these schools and they grab these kids. They have to go p compete against all the kids all over the world. And out of me, I was chosen to, to represent the United States into filmmaking. You know, I had first I got to beat the locals. And then you got to compete against the state, the best one out of San Antonio and Houston. And there was like four or five of them. I just smashed them. I just put my, I was the third person who competed. I smashed them on that. Then you got to compete against the other, the, the representatives at that state, so you can represent the United States. Smashed them, like cupcakes. But, international, man. That, Japanese man, that Clado making Project Dinosaur. Ooh, I can't stand that man. I can't. It still hurts me, man. Hey man, y'all see exactly, exactly why I'm trying to get the student task force together. This is this organization is gonna allow us to go in and to attack problems and to help people. It ain't just gonna be it's just to be, we don't be for everybody. Everybody, white, blacks, Hispanics, it doesn't matter. Student task force gonna be a group of um parents and students, mainly students, to go in to demand what they want, what they don't have, and what they like, 
and what they would like. This is for improvement for the next generation. And the next generation, we need to get this to, go, to get this to a tough. Please come at show for all y'all parents want to sponsor it to get it going. Y'all call me up so we can organize and get this together. We need to come together. Look what's going on, people. Look. They was going to pay for me to go to school. Soon as I get to high school, they was going to pay for me to go to this school. And I was going to be there. And the reason why I passed up because of my attitude. I had the wrong attitude. Kyla. Hello? Yeah. Yes. I just want to say you're a bunch of fucking niggers. Thank you very much. Oh, and another thing. I mean, when, you, when we receive racial calls like that one, it let us know how racial Austin is and how far we really have to go for this nation to be reformed. I mean, like that caller you just called, you should have listened to your president. You need to clean up your house, man. Because, um, I mean, it ain't no place in America for people like you. Yeah, and everybody. I mean, you, got, you must understand that uh, we are here and you are here too. And ain't no, nobody going to leave. I mean, we want, eventually we're going to have to get along, so uh, might as well start somewhere. But anyway, thanks for your comment.